Welcome to the presentation for Industry Collections Under the Hood for Factory Design. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be going through the presentation with you today. In today's presentation, we want to focus on how the factory design utilities enhance the tools that make up the Autodesk product design collection. We're going to start off by looking at what's inside the Autodesk product design collection. We'll focus on the factory design utilities, which are new to many of us coming from the product design suite. And we want to take a look at the benefits that the factory design utilities bring, specifically the asset-based workflow. We all know that the world is changing, and the way that we design our products is also changing. Autodesk is changing right along with us. They want to make sure that they're delivering the best tools we need in the easiest method possible. Now many of us are used to the suites, the product design suite or the factory design suite. Well that way of delivering products is moving on and it's being replaced with the industry collections. There are three industry collections, the Autodesk Architectural Engineering and Construction Collection, the Media and Entertainment Collection, and the collection that we're going to talk about today, specifically the Product Design Collection. The Product Design Collection, just like the Product Design Suite before it, delivers all the tools we need to develop a wide variety of products. But the Product Design Collection also includes the Factory Design Utilities which previously were only available in the factory design suite. All of the applications represented in the product design collection are up on the screen now. And if you'd like to pause the video at this particular point and take note of all of these applications, you're most welcome to. But all of the tools that we're used to using in the old product design suite are here. Of course, Inventor Professional still is, I think, the cornerstone application of the product design collection along with all the different AutoCADs that I think you will ever need. AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD Mechanical, uh, plain vanilla AutoCAD is here. Also with Fusion 360 and Vault, as well as the Navisworks application, Autodesk Recap, and so on. But I think really new to the product design category is the presence of the factory design utilities. And this is what we want to focus on in the next portion of our presentation. Now I want to focus on how these applications support and enhance the factory layout process. Let's start off with AutoCAD. All of the AutoCADs I think you'll ever need are of course included in the product design collection. All of your old legacy 2D data is absolutely going to be supported with the AutoCAD applications. I mentioned before Inventor is I think the keystone or the cornerstone of the entire process all of the 3D support that you need uh, for modeling your components is available inside I think the state-of-the-art 3D modeling application from Autodesk. These massive models that you're going to create are going to be supported by Navisworks which is really our digital mock-up solution for showing the entire facility all at the same time. Now these three tools AutoCAD, Inventor, and Navisworks are enhanced with the Autodesk factory design utilities. The factory design utilities bring extra functionality to AutoCAD, Inventor, and Navisworks in way of the factory layout process. Your design and visualization needs are going to be met with, I think, again, the state-of-the-art uh, visualization tool 3ds Max. If you're leveraging reality capture, your point clouds and your laser scans are going to be supported by Autodesk Recap. And another member of the factory layout process that we don't really get ch a chance to talk about a lot is the schematic analysis and simulation portion available with Process Analysis 360. If you're an engineering service provider, a building owner, or a machine manufacturer, you're used to the challenges faced in the factory layout process. Classically, this process is done in 2D, and we all know that there are many problems with dealing with a complex process or a layout facility like this in a classic top-down 2D approach. I think we're all familiar with the idea of having to do a bid or proposal to get work, and the free effort that has to go into generating those proposals. Many of us have to collaborate with many different partners some of which are not using the same CAD system that we're using. Uh, the 
our design practices are inefficient. They're still based on lines, arcs, and circles in classic AutoCAD. Uh, how do we detect clashes and interferences uh, when our entire design is simply vector data in a DWG format? It's kind of difficult to implement lean manufacturing techniques uh, when we are just in a flat 2D uh, reference drawing of an entire facility. We also spend a lot of time capturing the as-built state of existing facilities with hand measurements and sketches. Well, the goal of the factory design utilities is to answer many of the challenges that the factory layout designers face. Uh, we want to enhance the power of AutoCAD and we want to add the 3D effect that Inventor brings uh, to the digital prototyping process for factory layout. We want everyone in the process to be able to visualize the entire factory in a 3D manner. Of course, we have cloud-based solutions uh, and asset-based workflows that support all of this, but in the end, we really want to deliver an amazing 3D visualization of an entire facility for your engineering review and presentation purposes. The factory design utilities offer many benefits beyond the classic 2D approach to factory layout. Of course, we want you to win more business and improve your bidding profitability. We want you to meet your compressed project schedules and adapt to changing business requirements. We want it to be easy for you to collaborate with your suppliers and partners throughout the factory layout process. And we want to enhance all of your tools with the factory design utilities and bring this asset-based workflow to all aspects of your design process. Now I want to get out of PowerPoint for a while, open up the applications and let you see the factory design process for yourself. We're going to start our demonstration in Process Analysis 360. I've already laid out the schematic for a line that I'd like to develop. Process Analysis 360 allows me to approach the factory layout process not in a CAD-based solution, but in a simple schematic simulation-based application. I can add source objects, processors, buffers, products, and even operators to my schematic design. Each of these nodes has property information that supports the idea of, for instance, a container or a processor. Uh, processors have uh, many different properties that we can fill out, mean time between failure, mean time to repair, the output routing and utilization alarms, along with the way to define the specific task that happens in that particular station. Once we have the design laid out, we can simulate the process in context of time. We can actually see the products moving from the containers to the uh, processor, uh, the time it takes to operate the process, and then how it moves to the buffers and then to another processor, and finally to the actual product itself. Now thank goodness we can come over here and speed up time so we can see how long this process would actually take. As I'm reviewing the process, I'm a little concerned here with the buffer in this rack. I'm noticing that the capacity of my rack is continually growing. This could indicate that we have a bottleneck in the entire process. So you see I've reached my target quantity of 50 and the current layout solution has done this in a time of 4 hours and 15 minutes. I do, I, I do have a bit of concern here with the, uh, the buffer. We've actually left an, a lot of product here on the rack. If you need to run a report, you can absolutely come and do this. Let me go ahead and generate the summary report. If you ever have to present the numbers to your engineering team, these summary reports are a great tool to have. Here you can see the entire layout and the amount of time it took to generate the product in this particular configuration. You can also see my machine utilization. Both of my presses were pretty much maxed out through the process. If I scroll down, you'll actually see the buffer. This was the rack, and this is a little concerning. I have a lot of product building up in the buffer here. Now that buffer could be a rack, it could be a conveyor, but this is a, this is a warning in, in many cases of a potential bottleneck. We can also see our connection points where they were blocked and the amount of percentage that were blocked in the process. Well, let's hop back into process analysis and see if we can fix this. I'm simply going to do a, a simple copy and paste 
and uh, we're going to fix this by adding another processor here. We'll connect the rack simply by dragging the connection points and hooking it up. Now let's run the simulation again. You're going to see this time if I focus on the buffer that we don't have nearly as much bottleneck here as we did in the previous simulation. I'm also producing the product much faster at this particular point. So this is a much more efficient layout. You can see in just a, a matter of seconds we've declared that here I have 50 products now and it only took 2 hours and 14 minutes with this particular configuration. Again, if I need to go and generate a report to show the new numbers to my engineering staff, it's very easy to do. And I'm just going to scroll down and see the buffer and the improvement that we've had in eliminating that potential bottleneck. So now that I have the schematic layout of the process ready, I'm ready to start bringing my CAD tools online. Process Analysis 360 gives me the option to export this information to DWG. Now that I have the schematic open inside of AutoCAD, we're now dealing with full-scale data. These are the full-scale representations of the assets that we chose in the process analysis schematic. And these assets are represented with simple AutoCAD blocks. And at this point, it's just the, our classic 2D approach. I can come in and modify my, uh, my vector-based data inside of the AutoCAD application that we all know and love. Now, I want to take advantage of the factory design utilities, which enhance the AutoCAD application. You see the factory tab up here at the top. I, I can activate my asset browser and my factory properties tools, which I already have on the screen. The asset browser gives me access to hundreds of assets uh, that Autodesk supplies, as well as the ones that I can create myself. I'm going to add a few conveyors here. So I'm going to start off with a Y belt. We'll go ahead and bring this uh, conveyor in. These are basically just AutoCAD blocks. Uh, let me bring in the opposite belt over here. We'll just simply spin that around. Anything you can do with a block, as far as moving things into position, you can certainly do with these assets. Now, I need to bring in a couple of curve conveyors. You'll notice that these little uh, conveyor blocks have these dots on them that allow me to snap them in place very easily. I can also modify the properties. In this particular case, I can come over and modify the angle. Uh, in this case, it's a 45 degree angle. You'll see the part updates automatically. And then I can use the connect command to hook it back together. Do a simple copy paste. And then we'll use the connect command to hook this one up on the opposite side. We'll finish off with a couple of straight conveyors that'll help us access our second press. If you need extra assets, instead of looking through the vast catalog, you can simply type in a, a name and search for one. Uh, let's say I need a forklift. I'll just do a search, and I'll simply bring in the forklift. You access these blocks with a simple drag and drop approach. And there is the forklift in our design. Now that I have my 2D layout, I want to generate the 3D version of this design. And to do that, I'm going to use the Sync to Inventor command. I simply click this. I'll have to save and close this file. But at this point, Inventor takes over. It reads in that 2D footprint and puts the corresponding 3D asset on top of its 2D counterpart. Again, all of this is hands-free. You'll see all of these 3D components come in and in just a single click, we've moved from a 2D layout to a full immersive 3D layout design. Now there are many different workflows available with the factory design utilities. In this particular workflow, we focused on starting at the schematic level and then working all the way through 2D to a 3D design. But let me show you another method that's available. Inside of Inventor, you'll notice that factory design utilities are present as well. This allows me to start a brand new layout in the inventor environment. 
When you start a layout inside of Inventor, you're automatically given the floor. The floor is very key to all of the layout designs because all of the assets are going to land upright on this object. Another great tool available in the Factory Design Utilities is Add DWG Overlay. This allows me to go out and leverage my legacy AutoCAD data. I can bring this AutoCAD data in, our old 2D data, and I can place it onto the floor as reference lines. This allows me to place my assets in context of a full-scale facility. Now we place the assets just like we did before with a simple drag and drop approach. Here's the asset browser. This is another factory design utility. Let me go ahead and bring up my uh, asset or my factory properties as well. These are members of the factory design utilities and we use these quite a bit inside of Inventor. Just like in AutoCAD, I'm going to go over to my factory assets and I'm going to place a couple of conveyors. You place the conveyors with a simple drag and drop approach, just like you saw inside of AutoCAD. You can do the same thing inside of Inventor. Notice that I can snap my asset to the floor and to the AutoCAD footprint that we brought in earlier. I'm automatically prompted to reorient the design and then I can place a second one if I need to. The assets have connectors that are built into them that allow you to easily click the assets together just like those little building bricks you used to play with when you were a kid. Now these are very intelligent assets. You'll notice that as I bring in this curve asset, notice I'll snap it together at the top and that the legs will automatically lengthen to meet the floor. The same thing if I bring in another straight conveyor and place it here, you'll notice the legs adjust as well. You can modify the properties of the asset or the parameters anytime you need. Now, for instance, if I drop this asset in the back, if I select it, you'll see all the parameters available to edit inside the factory properties window. Let me go ahead and change this to uh, 144 inches long and you'll see it gets longer and extra legs appear as needed. Now let me finish up drawing the rest of this conveyor line utilizing these assets. So in next to no time, I have my entire conveyor line set up and ready to go. But we all know that change happens, and a lot of times we try to avoid change because it can really cripple our design layout process. But that's really not the case when we utilize the factory design tools. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we get to this particular point and we realize maybe we could replace this conveyor with another asset. Well, they're easy to snap together. They're also easy to take apart. I can simply hold the F7 button down and unconnect the assets. Then I can go through my asset browser and find my own custom assets very important that you realize you can create your own user assets with the factory design utilities. Um, I've got some simple assets here and I'm looking for an inspection station. So I'm going to bring in my inspection station and I'm going to see if it fits inside this particular layout. I can drag the rest of these assets around and I can connect them very easily back into the design. Then I can simply take a look from the top view and see if this is going to cause any problems. And in this case, it might. So it was a great opportunity to check and see if something was going to work, but I'm immediately prompted and, and, and can see visually that it's not going to work exactly as I plan. Now we could pursue this what-if scenario if we want to, or we could simply undo and put things back the way they were. Now the factory layout process also requires us to collaborate with many different people and a lot of times the people we need to work with are not using the same CAD package that we're using. Well that's not a problem when we use the factory design utilities. Let me show you what I mean. I have a machine here that I have to add to my line 
which was generated by another customer inside of AutoCAD. Now I can go to my layout tools and use the insert model command. This allows me to insert models from all different types of CAD sources. Uh, you can see up on the screen uh, all the AutoCAD applications, uh, CATIA, uh, JT, NX, Parasolids, ProE, uh, SolidWorks, all of those file types are supported. Now I'm simply going to bring in, I've already brought this into Inventor once, but this was originally done inside of AutoCAD, but it doesn't matter what the CAD system was, I can bring it in. Now this is not an asset, it's just a regular model. When you bring in a regular model, Inventor's going to place it inside of this bounding box, and the bounding box will land upright on the floor. If the original CAD tool had a different upwards direction, you can modify the orientation right away, and then agree to, to the proper orientation. You can also move the little triad to a known point, and then you can pick it up by that point and drop it right on top of its footprint. Now of course I also need to generate my classic documentation and to generate my drawings I'm going to choose the Inventor environment. Inside of Inventor I'm going to go to File New and I'm going to start a DWG file in order to document my design. Here's my AutoCAD drawing. I'm simply going to select my base view and in this case I want to generate my top view. I'm just going to reorient that and then I'm going to choose uh, 1 16th equals a foot for the scale. I'll simply click OK and here you can see the view. Now in the modern versions of uh, Autodesk Inventor uh, and the factory design utilities you can actually come in and choose to show our 2D footprint building in the same design. So here I have the building we did we used earlier as the DWG overlay. I'm just choosing to do it as a DWG underlay here but I see my factory layout on top of my initial AutoCAD drawing. You can see them both on the screen at the same time. Let me go ahead and add a, a section view. We'll just add a simple section view here. We'll bring this down here. Of course I could generate all my orthographic views uh, from this particular point. But I can also do a detail view of this particular area. Let's say we wanted to do that and place that up here to the right. We'll drop that off in place and just like I did before I can go in and choose to show my AutoCAD drawing. Of course all of my annotation options are available if I need to add some dimensions for my installation work I can absolutely do that. We can come in and, and measure for instance off the wall to this particular point here and drop in that particular dimension so that people can come in and start to build the facility out based on our, our installation drawings. I can also start another new sheet. Uh, one of the big benefits of the 3D workflow is the ability to come in and document our design isometrically. So if I need to place an isometric view on a sheet, I can absolutely do that. You know, many times people uh, in the modern age what we call digital natives. They've only grown up in the 3D world. They're used to seeing 3D information in the documentation. We can absolutely produce that kind of documentation with the factory design utilities. On the annotation here, I'll come in and add a parts list. We'll add our parts list and then I can document the design with the balloons. The balloons, uh, the information in the balloon will automatically correspond to the data in the parts list. But what happens if our design changes? Let's say as an example, I'm going to hop back over to my assembly. Let's say I forgot to add some catwalks to support the maintenance on this piece of equipment. Well, let's go ahead and add that in. I'm simply going to look for a catwalk. We'll come in and add that in position. I'll select it and modify its properties.
then I'll add some stairs. In this case, you'll notice that the uh, parameters from the catwalk will automatically pass to the stairs and update those accordingly. We'll go ahead and put this into position. And let's say I need a forklift as well. We'll bring in a forklift. When you place your assets, you can immediately use the reposition tool to place them exactly where you want. You can even type in an angle value to drop them in position. So now my assembly has been updated. Let's take a look at our drawing. If I hop back into the drawing, you'll see that all of this information is automatically added to each of the drawing views. It's also been added to the parts list. And if I come down and just, I can uh, use the balloon tools to automatically annotate these items in our drawings. And if I look over at my top view, I'm sorry, let me look over here at the top view, you'll notice that those views have been updated as well. Now that you've seen me document my 2D design, let's take it one step further and look at the entire facility all at the same time. To do this, I'm going to utilize Navisworks. Let me go ahead and open up the entire facility and I hope you notice how fast that actually loaded onto my screen. We can use Navisworks to visualize massive facilities with all of our assets in place at the same time, including the building and the civil design. Navisworks allows me to walk through the, de the design as if it was real. Let me go ahead and uh, jump down here onto the shop floor and take a look around. You'll notice that uh, you have a little avatar that you can walk around and investigate uh, the entire facility as you need to. You can also interact with the environment, walking up steps if necessary. If I walk over here to the back, you'll actually see the layout space that we worked on in this presentation. Navisworks allows me to work with just about any kind of CAD system you can imagine. From STEP, IGIS, ACES, of course, AutoCAD, but things that you don't typically work with like Google SketchUp or the DWF Design Review Tools or certainly Revit uh, and of course Inventor. All of these applications are supported. If I go to the append command, just like inside of Inventor, you're going to see a list of all the supported CAD files and it's incredible. Things like point clouds are supported as well as solid data, SolidWorks, CATIA, ProE, Rhino, 3D Studio Max. I like to say that if it's 3D, you can utilize it inside of Navisworks. It makes this the perfect application to collaborate with all of our stakeholders. There are many benefits that Navisworks brings to the table, but I think the best one or the, the most important one for our conversation today is clash detection. I can come in and activate my clash detection tools. I can analyze, in this case, all the columns in the building with all of my layout assets. Uh, I can go to my our results and immediately see all of the places where I have collisions. In this particular case, I'm automatically transported to a place where the column's interfering one of our safety fences. And if I go back, I can modify and look at the different collisions where a machine is actually interfering with one of the columns as well. Now many people get to this particular point in the presentation and they say to themselves, listen, we don't build factories. Uh, why would I ever consider using a tool called the Factory Design Utilities? Well, you certainly don't want to let the word factory get in the way or color your opinion of these applications. If you've ever used a block inside of AutoCAD, you know how important an asset-based workflow can be. Well now the Factory Design Utilities brings that asset-based workflow into Inventor. What I'd like to do to finish my presentation is to give you kind of a look into the past year of my life and how I've worked with many customers to implement the Factory Design Utilities. And I hope you're surprised that many of these people do not produce factories. 
I started off my year last year working with a company that does preschool furniture. They're constantly given different architectural spaces that they need to fill with their product and the factory design utilities worked perfect for that process. I've also worked with customers in the past on command and control centers. People who make very high-end equipment for monitoring systems, uh, the desks that you see here or the wall-mounted monitors, they need to constantly show their product in context of somebody else's architectural space. The factory design utilities are a perfect solution for that. One of the first demos I ever gave for the factory suite was to a company that lays out supermarkets. All the shelves and the freezers uh, and uh, the bins, all of those things are assets that we can arrange into any architectural space we choose. Uh, I worked last year with a major retailer. I can't drop their name here, but I just about guarantee many of you are wearing their clothes right now. They have stores all over the world and they need to use a constant set of ever-changing assets to lay out their point of sale. They chose the factory design suite to do, to do this. I live in Virginia and we just had a major sporting event right across the border in Bristol, Tennessee where they chose to basically invite both schools, uh, the University of Tennessee and Virginia Tech, to the Bristol Motor Speedway to have a football game and they transferred the venue from a racetrack to what was the largest uh, college football game in history. And, and converting the venue from a, a NASCAR track to a football stadium would have been a perfect use for the factory design suite. Uh, it reminds me of the first NCAA uh, college basketball game they play each year on board a Navy ship. If you have to convert a venue uh, from one uh, purpose to another, the factory design suite could be a perfect solution. Last year I worked with a company that creates these exhibit booths that you see on shows like Comic-Con or CES. And they wanted to be able to create these exhibit spaces with a snap fit approach. They wanted to have all the pieces uh, in a CAD package and snap them together. They had already spent millions of dollars coming up with their own CAD package to build these booths and they were quite surprised that the factory design utilities offer this functionality right out of the box. And not only can we show them how to build their booth, but we can put their booth in context of the entire exhibit space if necessary. When it comes to adopting the factory design process or the asset-based workflow, I think shipbuilders have really embraced this process. I've worked a lot in the past with shipbuilders in, in shipboard compartment layout situations. Last year I got a chance to present this process at Portsmouth uh, Naval Yard in New Hampshire, uh, showing the same uh, compartment layout process on board submarines. And in both cases it was very well received. There is a group that's actually augmented the factory design utilities to make them a substation design layout package. The company's called Automation Force, and I know many of you don't do substation layout design, but it's important you understand that people are embracing this asset-based workflow and coming up with their own, uh, I hate to say factory design suite or substation design suite, but they're, they're converting the application to do exactly what they want, not a factory. And finally, I finished up my year last year at Autodesk University teaching a class on point clouds and the factory design utilities. I actually called this reality enabled asset layout where instead of using 3D models as my asset I'm actually using laser scans. I can take a laser scan of a facility and fill it full of laser scans of actual assets and in all cases I'm dealing with real world data. I hope you've seen the advantages that the factory design utilities bring to our layout workflows. The floor, just the floor itself, the fact that all of our assets land upright on a given plane is fantastic. The way we can leverage our AutoCAD data as a DWG overlay or underlay and place our assets in context of that footprint is amazing. The asset-based workflow, you just can't underestimate how important that is in the inventor environment. Being able to create our own assets is something I didn't go through into this process, but it is an amazing benefit. 
Uh, you don't have to use the assets that Autodesk supplies. You can easily create your own. And these are functional, smart, intelligent assets where you can modify the parameters and see the asset update to suit. You saw that we can handle immense file sizes. We can put the entire facility in place and create what is in essence a digital mock-up using the Navisworks application. And I hope you saw how easy it was to use. So easy that even tradesmen can grab this tool and start utilizing it right alongside your engineers. This is going to conclude our presentation on the Autodesk Industry Collections and the product design collection specifically along with highlighting the factory design utilities. If you're new to the collections, I'm sure you have a lot of questions that you need answered. If you have questions about these new collections, I really would encourage you to contact your Imaginate Technologies account manager and discuss your options if you're looking at migrating from the old suites to the new collections. Also on Imaginate.com there is a frequently asked questions document. If you have questions, I'd encourage you to check out that document as well. I do want to thank you for the time and attention you've given to this presentation, and I wish you a good day.